In your presentation, you discussed the ways that you use digital storytelling. Can you please discuss some of these uses in more detail? One of the major components of my presentation was that um, I've been doing, di doing digital storytelling for about 10 years or so with my students and I've learned many lessons. So I tried to tell the audience uh, some of the most important lessons that I had learned so that they would have the benefit of my experience without having to go through some of those uh, same mistakes and frustrations that I went through. But I think one of the most important of those lessons was that uh, digital stories by themselves are interesting and they're a wonderful way to use technology but they're not the entire picture. They are just, in my opinion, most useful when you think about them as being one piece of a much larger educational package. So what I do now is I ask my students to create one digital story or two or three uh, but not just as stories themselves, but as part of a larger collection of educational resources. So now what my students do is they will select a topic and they will go through the same process that I described earlier of selecting a topic and writing a script and creating a storyboard and ultimately creating the digital story and finalizing it. But they'll also create educational materials that can support that story. So, uh, for example, some of my students are teachers and they will create lesson plans to go along with the digital stories, or classroom activity sheets, or a glossary of terms, or they'll find articles that have been written by other people that talk about some of the same issues that are spoken about in, uh, in the digital story. Uh, I have one example that I think is particularly interesting where one of my students is a social worker and she created a digital story about bladder cancer survivors because her grandmother was a bladder cancer survivor and what she did is she created a blog for survivors other survivors of bladder cancer so it was a survivors group blog where people could post questions and answers and have an ongoing discussion that would help them uh, as they recovered from this disease or had family members that were going through it. And so the digital story that she created and then others that she found and collected, she also posted to the blog. So the digital stories were part of this larger educational resource of a blog and stories and discussions and pictures and case studies and links to further information about bladder cancer and how you, how you can deal with it and other links to support groups and those kinds of things. So it's not always focused primarily on the classroom. It could be education in a broader context as well. I have another student who is a high school science teacher and she created a website where her students did a variety of different digital stories all focused on the scientific research process and in addition to the digital stories that the students created she uploaded lesson plans and assessment activities and rubrics and uh, all kinds of evaluation criteria and links to additional information about the scientific method and research studies and it's it's just it's a it's a collection of educational materials that gives viewers a much fuller picture of what the digital stories are about Thank you.